Good morning and welcome to Hazel Park United Church of Christ on this third Sunday of Epiphany. It is so good to be able to worship with you on this Sunday. A few announcements before we begin this morning. After worship today at 11.30 a.m., you should find a Zoom link in your Hazel Park News um, as a way for us to check in with one another. I'm offering a time from 11.30 to 12.30 today and tomorrow from 6.30 to 7.30. And it really is to check in with you. How are you doing really? We have been faced with so much in this season. It's a lot. We are carrying a lot of burdens and weight as it's related to COVID, grief, just our day-to-day -day tasks seem like a lot. And we haven't been able to do what we do best, and that's to gather as community. So on these moments, and these particular moments at 11.30 today and at 6.30 tomorrow, I wanna to gather us and to find out how you're all doing and what are some of the needs that you are needing at this time. Well, I'm also gonna offer some time for families, families with children, grandchildren, where you have that day-to-day -day interactions and that, what that means for um, conversations to take place next Sunday and Monday. So next Sunday at 11.30, next Monday at 6.30 as families have had to nav navigate in-person schooling, distance learning, masks, no masks, isolation, quarantine, you name it. That's a whole other avenue that many of us have had to deal with. And what does that feel like? And how are you holding up? And what can we do for you as your church family? Again, it's just to check in with you to see how you're all doing. The other thing to be looking out for in the mail in the next couple of weeks is your annual giving statement. We know that tax season is upon us and your church um, treasurer and financial secretary are busy getting those items together. So please know that the, uh, to be on the lookout for those items. Again, be watching Hazel Park News as there's always a variety of things coming through from the congregational standpoint and also from your neighborhood as to what's taking place within our neighborhood. Next Sunday, hopefully, will be our last virtual service. The hope is still to move into in-person that first Sunday in February. We will communicate with you if that were to change in any way. And I appreciate your patience as we continue to pivot through this time and to keep each other safe. Now, for our time to get together, for worship. It is to hear that spirited voice of Jesus move through his constituents, through his disciples, as he does what he does best, and that is to teach. We're going to hear this morning as he is handed the scroll in the synagogue back in Nazareth, his hometown, and he reads a portion of Isaiah, and he says, the spirit of the Lord is, up, is upon me. And then at the end of this this passion passage we hear, today I fulfill the reading of scripture. Today, focusing in on the word today, a level and sense of immediacy that Jesus wasn't talking about if or when or what time, today. So how is the spirit upon us? How do we see the work that we've been called to do shaping us and moving in us and through us and around us as we are called to be community, yes, in a little different way in this time, and yet still called to be community? The other passage we'll be leaning into today is from Paul's letter, first letter to the church in Corinth about how there are many members and one body and how do we work together to do community. There's a bulletin in your Hazel Park News. There should be a bulletin linked to this live stream. And if not, everything that is your response will be coming up at the bottom of your screen today. Let's share responsibly in our call to worship this morning. Spirit is upon, within, and all around us. With hearts open to receive the good news of God's good ways, let us worship God. God who calls, inspire us to share in the fulfillment of your good news as stories of your teaching and your ways flow forth from the page and into our lives. Let us worship together at our kitchen tables and in our living rooms. 
Let us gather knowing that the Spirit of God is upon us today. And let us pray. God of all generations, who has gathered us together through all the ages, tell us once again the stories of your life, law, and love, that we may remember who we are as the body of Christ in our time. Amen. we gather as a corporate body to confess together the sin in which that is a part of us and moves in us and how we claim it but then also to know that there are words of assurance that we're not in this alone that there is grace there is love and there's forgiveness so let's take a moment to be human together and to confess together we share in these words responsibly we like to think ourselves open to new ways and new ideas. We tried that once and it didn't work. We claim to be welcoming and hospitable. Who invited that person? And we truly desire help from new members. We have always done it this way. Let us pray. In our humanity, we sometimes become set in our ways. 
In our fear, we can be reluctant to break out of familiar routines. In our complacency, we are not always willing to try new things. God, for all the times when we have cut off the dreams, hopes, or imaginings of your reign, we are truly sorry. And I invite us into a moment of silent reflection and confession to be with our God. Hear these words of assurance inspired by Psalm 91. Indeed, the Spirit of a God is upon us. Therefore, the words of your mouth and the meditations of your heart are acceptable to God, your rock-solid companion and the liberator of your soul. Thanks be to God. Amen. We now come to a time to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to us on this day, and we turn to two readings. The first is from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, Corinthians chapter 12, beginning with verse 12. And Paul reminds this very diverse church of their need for one another. They are formed into God's people just as the human body is formed, with all its separate parts cooperating together in common function and purpose. And then we hear from the Gospel of Luke this morning, chapter 4, beginning with verse 14. Earlier stories in Luke relate how Mary and Joseph observed Jewish customs. Now the Gospel affirms that Jesus honors these traditions. Jesus observes the Sabbath by going to the synagogue in his hometown of Nazareth. He stands to read scripture and sits to teach as was the custom of the rabbis. Let's take a moment then to hear what the Holy Spirit has to say to us on this Sunday. And thanks for Veronica for reading today. Reading from the New Revised Standard Version, hear these words from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, chapter 12, beginning with verse 12. One body with many members. For just as the body is one, and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as God chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this. But God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body but the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. If one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. 
And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then deeds of power, then gifts of healing, forms of assistance, forms of leadership, various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak in tongues? Do all interpret? But strive for the greater gifts, and I will show you a still more excellent way. Here ends this reading. Reading from the New Revised Standard Version, hear these words from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, beginning with verse 14, the beginning of the Galilean ministry. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. The rejection of Jesus at Nazareth. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. He went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was the custom. Jesus stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. Jesus unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of God is upon me, because God has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. God has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of God's favor. And Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Here ends this reading. Jesus goes to his hometown of Nazareth, and he goes into that synagogue, and they hand them the scroll, hand, hands, hands them the scroll, and he reads, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, he has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to those who are unable to see, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolls up the scroll and he gives it back to the attendant and he sits down and they all sit and look at him. Can you imagine being one of those just sitting and looking and wondering, well, what's that all about, Jesus? So what if the Spirit of the Lord is upon me? And then for Jesus to say, today, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. I wonder what that moment would have been like to be sitting in the synagogue, to hear words of teaching and scriptures, to hear the words of the prophet Isaiah spoken, and to know that when Jesus was speaking, he truly was in the moment, saying that the Spirit of the Lord was upon me. And knowing that every person there gathered was a member of that community, with their various gifts and attributes that they brought to, the, brought to that place, knowing that when we gather in community, we hear how the Spirit moves in us and through us and around us in ways we never imagined. And when we pool our resources together, we create something beautiful. Perhaps that's what Jesus was trying to shed some light on, that he too was called by the Spirit in that moment to speak and to preach amongst a group of individuals who had not necessarily seen him in that light before, but was able to offer something new to the conversation. To be present, to be a part of the community made up of many parts. The interrelatedness that we sometimes take, um, take advantage of and don't take the time to really marvel at as a community that gathers in our diversity and how interrelated we are and to know that we are so much better together than apart but recognizing that when we are our many parts as Paul talks about when we put it all together we make something beautiful 
in our identity and personhood as it relates to our interrelatedness has that common denominator of Jesus the Christ at work reminding us of that spirit that calls us, a spirit that holds us accountable, a spirit that nudges us in ways we have not thought of before. And especially in this season of COVID, in this season that has turned things upside down, what is the Spirit calling us to do in this season? The season of epiphany, a season of aha moments, a season that causes us and tells us, perhaps invites us to pause. To do this work, it takes a village. And we know that to be true as members together, though fragmented, though sitting in our living rooms and kitchen tables, we know though to be church, it takes a village. And we know that what binds us together is Jesus's words and also that spirit that moves in us and through us and around us. We need each other. And we need each other to be who we are called to be. As individuals, we cannot be all things to all people. And when we are who we are, we can strive together for the greater gifts. The gifts that Paul shares with us in his writings this morning. And then as we look ahead to next week and how Paul says that when we are in community and we have the many parts making up the body of Christ, that there is love and how that love that is patient and kind and is not envious or boastful or rude. It is that love of community that drives us to do the work and it's that work that is filled by the spirit that keeps calling us, calling us. The other piece to Jesus' message this morning that strikes me is his use of the word today how Jesus is very present in the moment in the synagogue and how, I don't know about you, there are times when I stall out for I sometimes don't know what to do in the moment when the Spirit is upon me and the Spirit is calling, but I sometimes don't always know what the Spirit is calling us to do and say in that moment. So I like to say words like, we'll see, or maybe, or not quite yet, or I'll get back to that tomorrow. We've all done it to give ourselves a little more time. And Jesus isn't necessarily giving us time, for he says today, today the scriptures are fulfilled. I can hope that the scriptures are, filled for, are fulfilled for today. And as a person listening to the Spirit move, I will try my best to make sure that those who cannot see can see and those who are oppressed can go free and to make sure we share the good news and yet some days are better than others and we too find ourselves in a holding pattern jesus calls us to divine action for it's immediate and yes we wait sometimes we wait because we don't know what else to do and yet jesus is with, is with us in the waiting and so we lean into our gifts, the gifts that are used for the common good, the gifts that call us into a community that is loving, authentic, and inclusive. So on this day, the Spirit of God is upon us. What is the Spirit of God calling to you? What is the Spirit saying to you on this day? And how will we continue to be community in this new way in 2022 when we still haven't figured out how we've shifted post-COVID? What does community look like and what do we want it to look like? And how is the Spirit going to be present with us when we forge this community together? I don't know. We'll see.
For our ministry moment today, it is to continue to highlight the work of OCWM, our church's wider mission. And in the month of January, we're taking this time to share with you information about what does OCWM mean, what does it do, and why does it matter? And how does the Spirit continue to call us to give to OCWM? I'd like to share with you some a notation from UCC Mission Moments, and it is an example of what OCWM works toward, and it is um, entitled Good News, Good Ways. Today is Ecumenical Sunday, falls smack dab in the middle of the week of prayer for Christian unity, which runs from January 18th to January 25th. One of the ways that Christian unity was found, has found an expression, is through ecumenical councils and associations. Because of our denomination's prayer that they may all be one, members of the United Church of Christ are often deeply invested in these organizations. The Wisconsin Council of Churches is headed by Executive Director Reverend Carrie Parker, a UCC clergy member. Like many such organizations, the Wisconsin Council of Churches generally, generally works on a variety of projects and advocacy locally helpful in Wisconsin. When the council began as an informal gathering of all male clergy in the 1930s, those original members could not have imagined that 90 years later their organization would be headed by a woman who would become one of the most dependable nationwide voices for church leadership during these past years of a global pandemic. The Wisconsin Council of Churches Guide, COVID-19 and Our Christian Witness is a clear and reliable source of information and support that was widely shared and utilized by churches far outside the Wisconsin Council of Churches' usual constituency during the pandemic months. In fact, our congregation leaned into some of those writings as we too were coming up with our COVID policy and, and to offer guidance for the best ways in which to care for our congregation. As their website says, churches around the world are learning how to be imaginative in their ministry in order to be present to those in need in a time of social disruption. From the experiences of communities facing crises around the world, we know that faith leaders can play a transform, transformational role in calming fear, disseminating accurate information, and modifying religious practices to help keep people safe while providing spiritual care and honoring important community traditions. Today we give thanks for the Wisconsin Council of Churches, and their role in being a voice of faith and reason both locally and nationally during the global pandemic. And if you're not in Wisconsin, what do you know about the ecumenical organization in your area? What impact are they having locally or more broadly? And how can you be involved in this important work? Minnesota too has a council of churches and they are heavily active in the life and world of this metro area as well as nationally. This is a snapshot of what OCWM does to help support the greater good. And I thank you. I thank you for your generosity of spirit as you continue to give to OCWM and also to the life and ministry of this congregation so that we can continue to do good work together and to hear the Spirit's call. Let's take a moment to pray together. Oh, great dreamer, Inspire us in your ways that in our imaginings, hopes, and prayers, we become the fulfillment of all that is possible in our world, our neighborhood, this place, and in each of us. Amen. We now come to a time of prayer, a time in which we can lift up joys and concerns that are in our hearts and minds on this day, and I invite you to name and list your prayer requests in the comments section below as we will continue to hold all of us in a time of prayer, intentional prayer. And on this day, I ask for continued prayers for the family of John Ask as they grieve his death this week. So prayers for Bonnie and her family as they grieve the loss of John. And for all those who continue to grieve in this season for loss 
for transitions, for moments of great uncertainty. We lift all of you up, all of these names that come to our hearts and minds at this time as we gather in this moment of prayer. Loving and gracious God, we come to you in this season of epiphany still, where we continue to see your spirit move in us and through us and around us as we marvel at your work and what we are able to do together as a community of faith. We dream of a world where everyone has enough and pray that we might live simply and justly to create an equal distribution of your goodness. We imagine creation in all its beauty and pray we will walk lightly on this earth, living as co-creators and caretakers of your gift. We envision inclusive circles of dialogue, holy conversation of study and prayer that inspire inquiring minds and discerning hearts in all of us. We picture a place of hospitality and pray that we will respond compassionately as we welcome in the brokenness of our world. O oh, great dreamer, we come to you in this space and in this time, inspired by your gifts and inspired by your love to continue to move forth with us as your people, called just as we are with our gifts and our imaginings, as we move forth together, knowing that we are better together than apart as a community held together by your spirit and love, saying the prayer you taught us to pray, beginning, Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. foundation. God, Spirit, and Son be with you on this day and always. Go in the peace of Christ, my friends, and let the people say,